How important is it to have your headphones as flat as possible? Um, well, what's, what's most important is to understand what they're doing. Most speakers, mo most headphones are not flat. In fact, most gear that claims to be flat is not flat. And by flat, we mean uh, a flat frequency response. So essentially, it's uh, uh, across the frequency spectrum, uh, sound going in, signal going in, is reproduced at the same level coming out. Um, what's, what's more important than, f than flat response from speakers and from headphones is really understanding what they're doing. A big part of your job as a mixer, as an engineer, has to do with translatability. Okay. So in other words, having something sound great in your headphones or on your speakers is not that helpful if it sounds terrible elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, again, part of why you want to work on your room, uh, dealing with room modes and, and um, uh, things that color the sound, is that you want to be able to, to count on translatability of your mixes, mm -hmm. taking your mix out and having it sound the same as what you thought you were doing. Right. That's one of the big challenges. Okay. And so, um, uh, yes, having speakers that are wildly off or headphones that are wildly off that are you know, greatly exaggerating the bass or don't have enough top end or have a hyped top end, have much too much sort of high frequency, exaggerated high frequency, that's not an ideal situation, um, particularly because you will then tend to underemphasize. So, for instance, you have headphones that have been hyped so that they sound good, and that seems like, oh, well, they, I like listening to them. That's great for listening if, if you find that pleasurable, but for mixing, what's going to happen is you will assume that there's a lot of high-frequency content in your mix, right. and you're going to underdo it. And then you're going to take it out, and all of a sudden your mix sounds really dull. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, yes, not having greatly exaggerated high-end, low-end, other anomalies is an important thing. Right. But most important is to learn your speakers, learn your, your, mm -hmm. your headphones, and see how they translate. Uh, the way you do that is by having recordings that you know. Right. And that's definitely something that we recommend both to you know, the critical listening students, to our students in the program. You have to build up your reference listening library. Kind of calibrate your ears. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first piece. What you'll find is that you know, the, the ear-brain connection is so interesting. From one day to the next, your perception can be actually wildly different in mm -hmm. terms of your concept of how much high-end or low-end there is. Having reference listening helps exactly that, calibrate your, mm -hmm. your, your ears so that you say, okay, I know that this, for, for five years I've been listening to this, I know this sounds great, I know what it sounds like, let me pop it in, and I get accustomed to, okay, I'm calibrating my ears or the, the ear-brain connection, and also getting calibrated to my environment at that, at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so if you have that goalpost, now you have something to shoot against. Okay. Um, in fact, what you'll see also, if you, uh, you know, if you were a fly on the wall in a, in a uh, mix setting um, in any studio, you would typically find a bunch of reference recordings. Because mm -hmm. even as you're doing, okay, now let's track some background vocals and you've got arrangement ideas, you're constantly, ch you know, we're, we don't produce in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, that doesn't mean that we, you know, we're copying or that we're not being original, but, but really you, you have to have a benchmark and you have to right. be comparing yourself so that you know, okay, ooh, did I, you know, do I have enough vocal? Now, we get used to that and we start to have a sense of where the vocal wants yeah. to be, but it's actually really helpful to then pop in something. I'm doing a jazz thing putting in uh, you something You do that, it right there? You'll, you'll stop sure. what you're doing and put in some reference it, material? Absolutely. Wow. Do a little A-B for a minute yeah. to make sure we're headed in the right direction. Um, you're doing a jazz vocal thing, put in a CD by Al Schmidt, you know, a Diana Krall CD. Mm -hmm. It's a humbling experience, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's a necessary one. Sometimes we're afraid to, you know, we don't want to, and it's true, you don't want to stop the creative flow, but you do need a reality check. Sure. And that's how you learn.